Seguimos. Yeah. Wow. Good morning, everybody. I'm Mr. Scott. This is my friend, Mr. Eric. Good morning. Uh, question for you guys. Does anybody have spring break this week? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we went to, and we go to Florida, Texas, California, Arkabama. Arkabama. Where did you guys go? Arkansas. New York, all right. Branson, I'm gonna go there. Branson, nice, okay. I met somebody this morning that went to Kentucky and saw the real life replica of the Ark. Has anybody been there or heard of that before? You've been, you been there? Oh, I heard it. I wanna go. I was like, it's probably like, really pretty smelly with all the animals, right? Like, they need a big cleanup crew. In fact, they're hiring for uh, pooper scoopers. I heard. Is that right? Yeah. He can make good money. money. Uh, you guys, uh, did anybody play board games on their spring break? No. What did you guys play? What games? Card games. What? Video games. Sequence? Sequence? Trouble, okay. Oh, that sounds really fun. That's great. Yeah, what'd you guys play? <laughs> what, yeah, you play games? Oh, Monopoly. Yeah. Monopoly. Um, chess, checkers, um, yeah. Chess, checkers, Uno Flip. I played Uno Flip yesterday. Um, and games, board games can teach us about different things in life, right? Like Monopoly, uh, or uh, let's see, what else is a good strategy game for you? Uno, yeah, there's some strategy to Uno, yeah. Connect Four is a good strategy game. Uh, Clue, anybody do that where you gotta figure something out? Yep. Yeah. So last week, we did, remember our game last week? Hungry Hippos, and what did that teach us about? Greed. Greed, yes, nice. exactly, good job, yep. Hungry Hippos, you're trying to get everything for yourself as quickly as you can. But remember that the Bible warns us that we need to guard against Guard against greed because it can distract us from having a rich relationship with God. If we spend all of our time and all of our energy trying to get all the things for us, for ourselves, a lot of, let's say just trying to get a lot of money, it'll distract us from a rich relationship with God. So today we're moving on to our next game. Yeah. Is... Well, have you guys ever played this game? Yeah? Okay, yeah, play that game? Sorry. So, so last week we learned about an action associated with greed. The way we combat greed is that we actually we become generous, right? So today we're going to look at the game Sorry. Now, you guys have played Sorry. Has anybody not played Sorry? Okay. So here's what you have to do in Sorry. You have a piece, and you have three pieces, and you have to go all the way around the board and come back to your home, right? So that sounds pretty easy, right? Why is it not easy? Because you have a sword. You get knocked back. You get knocked back. So if another player, if I'm way up here and another player lands on me, I have to go all the way back home. And what are they supposed to say when they land on you? <laughs> Do you hear how you said that? Sorry. Are you really sorry? No, you're trying to win a game, right? And so you're not really that sorry because you're trying to win, right? So that's actually what we're gonna be talking about today. See, Jesus teaches us about this concept of, of sins and being sorry, right? He, he, he didn't teach us the game of sorry, but he teaches us about being able to say sorry. He also, he also taught us about forgiving others. And the last thing he talked about was actually meaning it. Okay, so raise your hand if you ever had somebody do something to you that made you really angry. Oh, lots of hands. Yeah, yeah, I think pretty much everybody. Okay. Um, now, raise your hand if you've ever done something wrong and you had to say those two hard words. I'm sorry. Yep, I think I've had to do that. Has everyone had to do that? Okay, let me tell you a quick story about one time that I had to do that. I took my kids swimming. It was the end of the night, and uh, it was time to go home. It was dark in the summertime, and my son said, I'm gonna just skateboard home from the pool. Oh, yeah. 
And I said, it'll be safer if you just hop in the back of the van, but it'll, it'll be fun because we'll, we'll just leave the van, the back gate of the van up and open and we'll just drive along like that. Now, I know my wife had told me, don't do that. Don't do that. Somebody's going to get hurt. And I'm like, no, it's fine. So he hopped in the back of the van. We drove home and the garage door was open. So I pulled right into the garage, but I forgot to close that lift gate. And guess what? The glass went smash and it rained down all over my son Noah. And he had like little cuts and a little bit of blood coming off oh, his God. tummy and his he was chest. Okay. And I was like, oh no. I knew that my wife told me, don't do that. But guess what? I did it. And so I was like, Noah, you go in the house, but don't go through the kitchen because mom's in there. So go in the other way. So if you want to see it, you can take a quick shower and she won't see the blood and panic. <laughs> but she saw us and you know what I had to say because she told me to do it. I'm sorry. Yes, I had to say, I'm sorry. And you know what? The Bible tells us, the Bible tells us to say sorry when we've done something wrong, right? Um, and there's, what is the problem that all of us have in our lives, every human has that we have to deal with in God. What is that called? Sin. sin. Yeah, we have, job. we have a sin problem, right? And we have to say sorry for that. In fact, our ABCs of faith, what's, what does the A stand for? Admit. Admit, Admit what? Believe. What, 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 what is that? Ad, Admit that you sin. Yep. So when you admit that you sin, you're saying, God, I'm sorry that I sin. And you know what's really, really good about that is God's response to when we say sorry. There is a promise that God makes to us in the Bible, and we're going to read that promise. Let's read it together, okay? 1 John 1, 9 says, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive our, our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Isn't that a really good promise? That when you say sorry to God, he promised that he will forgive you. And I know that makes me feel really good because that that promise, it fixes, it fixes the relationship between us and God that sin had broke. Yeah. You know, and it, and it doesn't stop there. So not only do we have to fix our relationship with God when we sin by, by asking him for forgiveness, but Jesus also talks about fixing another relationship. The relationship with the person we sinned against. So, so Jesus taught us that we should we should say I'm sorry to other people. So, if I do something, if I hurt Scott's feelings, I need to to ask God for His forgiveness because that's a sin. But I also need to need to come to Scott and ask Him for His forgiveness. I need to come to Scott and say I'm sorry, mm -hmm. right? And there's so many times that that we think about I can say sorry to God. But we don't always think about the others. But here's the thing. It's so powerful mm -hmm. when you say I'm sorry to someone. To, to someone. It's so powerful. Because what it ends up doing, and we can see it in, in how God prioritizes this in Matthew chapter 5. It talks about how you can go. It says if, you, if you're presenting your sacrifice. So remember in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. that you present your sacrifice at the altar to God. To reconcile for your sins but God says whoa, 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 wait before you do that with me if you have a sin against somebody go take care of that and so what this says is I go to the altar and God says no I'm gonna leave all your stuff here and you go fix that relationship first and so then I have to go and fix the relationship and say I'm sorry and then I can come back and and complete my sacrifice at the altar See, God prioritizes that. He says how important it is. So when we mess up, it's not just good enough to say sorry to God, but we also have to say sorry to others. In fact, in James 5.16, I love this, this verse that talks about we confess our sins so that we, we can be healed. See, it's not just the person that I sinned against that I'm healing by saying I'm sorry. It also is healing me because... Have you ever done something that you felt guilty for? Like, like I've, I've said something to somebody that I knew hurt their feelings, and I just walked away. But then I, I just kept on thinking about it. It was weighing on me. It was like this big weight on my shoulders, on my back. And I kept on thinking about, I hurt that person's feelings. I hurt that person's feelings. 
right? So not until I actually went back to that person and I apologized by saying, I'm sorry, I hurt your feelings, did it not only fix my relationship with that person, but it also took that big weight off my shoulders. And uh, has anyone ever done something to you and let's say they apologize to you and you don't feel like forgiving them? You ever had that feeling? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see what Ephesians 4.32 says about that. Instead, uh, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. And there's another verse in Colossians that says this. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. So on that last line, it says, the Lord forgave you, so you should forgive others? Must, must forgive others, right? Right. The Lord is calling us. It's, it's a command. You must do it. You must forgive others. But when we remember what Jesus did for us, he was brutally beaten. He, he endured lots of people saying mean things to him and hurting him violently. And he did that so that he could forgive us, right? And when we remember that, how does it, does it make it easier to forgive others that have done something wrong to us? Yeah. Yep. Because before we even said sorry, he forgave us. Yeah. And, and you know, that, that's really powerful too. So, so what did we have to do to earn forgiveness? Nothing. Right? So, so if you think about somebody who has ever said sorry to you and you knew they didn't mean it, like, let me hear your, your sorry that you don't mean it again. You already did it. Ready? Sorry. Yeah, right? Do you, do you mean it? Well, sometimes our natural reaction is that, well, you hurt my feelings, so you have to earn my friendship back. Or you have to do some things. You have to clean my room for a week before yeah. I'm going to forgive you. Yeah. But see, God sent Jesus so that we could be forgiven and we don't have to do anything. Anything. That's, where, that's why it's so important what Scott said. We must forgive. God tells us we must forgive. It doesn't say you must make the other person do a lot of things before you forgive them. So think about a time when you have said, I'm sorry. You've done something like, like to a friend. You did something to a friend and you're like, sorry. Right? Or, or a classmate. You do something wrong and the teacher sees you and the teacher comes over and says, you need to go over and apologize. And so you walk over and you're like, sorry. <laughs> right? You, you, you don't mean it. In fact, sometimes, and, and this, this has happened to me and maybe it's happened to you, sometimes, like, when your parents catch you doing something or, or they, they, they end up figuring out that you did something wrong and then they, they say, well, you need to apologize for that. And you actually apologize, but you're not, you're not apologizing because you did it. You're apologizing because you got caught. Right? Does that happen to anybody? You're like, bummer. They saw me take my brother's pudding. <laughs> right? So you're, you're sorry you got caught, but see, here's the thing about this. We, we talked about the forgiveness of it, but truly forgiving somebody, truly being sorry, means that actually when you say sorry, there's another word that comes to mind. It's called repent. So what that means is when you do something wrong, you're following this path of doing something wrong. And then when you realize it, repent means you turn from it and you go the other way. You stop sinning and you turn from it, right? You repent. That's what it means. It actually reminds me of a story. Um, do you remember the guy? Yeah, yeah, we should tell this story. Okay, let's let's tell the story. I need two volunteers. Um, oh, you got to guess the story. I'll hum the song. Adley, come on up. You step up on stage and Viv, here, you're with me down here. You know that song? All right. You don't know that song? You're going to be with Mr. Scott. You little man. All right, so... In the Bible, it talks about a guy named Zacchaeus. Has anybody heard Zacchaeus before? Yeah. Yeah, Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus is up here. And let me tell you just a little bit about Zacchaeus. He's a tax collector. We love tax collectors, don't we? No. 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 He was really, he was hated by everybody, right? Because he was getting rich from all your money. 
So Zacchaeus is taking, Adley, is taking all of your money and he's keeping it for himself and he's giving the Roman Empire what they, what they asked for, right? Well, there's this one day, Jesus here is walking through a town called Jericho. He's walking through Jericho and Zacchaeus hears that Jesus is coming and he's trying to just get a glimpse of Jesus. He's just trying to see Jesus. And so as Jesus is walking through with a group, Zacchaeus is trying to find him, but Zacchaeus is a little short. Can you see Jesus, Zacchaeus? No? Okay. So Jesus is walking through, and Zacchaeus goes over to a tree and climbs up a tree just so he can catch a glimpse of Jesus. And Jesus sees him, and he calls him by name, Zacchaeus. Quick, come down. Come down. Now, now say, we're going to your place to eat. So Zacchaeus is really excited. Act excited. Act excited. Abby, act excited. Go, <laughs> All right, good. All right, so Zacchaeus gets really excited, and he takes Jesus to his own. Okay, you guys can sit down. Thank you. All right, so Zacchaeus is really excited. Now, you guys, how do you feel about this? You're grumbling. And you can see by the story up, up there, it says they grumble. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord. And here's the thing. Here's where Zacchaeus, he meets Jesus. And he repents. He stands before the Lord. And he says, Lord, I will give half of my wealth to the poor. Wow. And if I have cheated anyone, I will give them four times what I cheated them. So what changed? Zacchaeus met Jesus. And so Zacchaeus, he confessed what he was doing wrong. He also committed to fixing it and making it right by giving away his wealth and saying he would give four times the, the taxes if he's cheated somebody, all because he met Jesus. He turned away and he accepted Jesus. So did Jesus forgive him? Yeah, Jesus, he's, for all of us, he's faithful to forgive us if we confess our sin. That's a really good promise. Now, are you guys, are you guys quick to say sorry when you mess up or do something wrong? Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's easier than other times, right? Do you guys mean it like Zacchaeus meant it? No. Sometimes, right? Well, God is, God is calling us to, to mean it, right? And when we remember what Jesus did for us on the cross... It's easier to do that. So, who here has made the decision to follow Jesus? Awesome. A lot of you have. Who here is still thinking about making that decision? So that's awesome. That's great. Hey, if you're thinking about making that decision, you can talk to me or Eric. You can talk to Tyler or Kelsey or Mar Marissa or any of your teachers and talk to your parents, right? And they can help you walk through that decision. And if you, uh, what's the ABCs of faith again? The A is. Admit that, you're, that you've sinned, right? God is faithful to forgive you. Yep. Yep. You believe that Jesus died for your sins is the B. And the C is call on Jesus as the Lord of your life and follow him. Right? So let me pray for you. And then we'll do our announcements. Ready? One, two, three. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you are faithful to forgive us. And Lord, help us to be quick to forgive others because we must forgive others. And you set it up this way so you could have mercy on us and then we could be with you and you could fix our relationship, you could fix our sin problem. And so we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.